It's about to go down. Burning your ears with another all-killer and no-filler episode of the best motorsports radio on the planet. It's the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. With your host, Jim Beaver. Sliding trophy trucks, jumping razors, and dropping the mic at events across the country. Amy Hood. What's up, guys? I'm a professional fun haver, dirt bike rider, and monster truck driver. With support from Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, and Dirtfish. Hang on tight, strap in, and get ready to smoke some tires and lay some roost. Here's the man who carries a steering wheel in one hand and a mic in the other. Jim Beaver. Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, Jim Beaver here holding it down uh, in what is going to be a fun, fun show, man. Great guest lineup. Uh, a couple of, well, I guess a new uh, a new cast member, uh, you know, today onto the show. Uh, I don't know. Why am I calling them cast members? Isn't that what Disneyland calls their employees? Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, Racer Magazine's Kelly Crandall also has a podcast called the Racing Riders Podcast. She will be joining me uh, today to talk Yes, uh, a little bit of NASCAR, and yes, a little bit of pro wrestling. Who would have thought I would have found another fellow pro wrestling fan in the world of motorsports? I didn't, but uh, hey, we found one with Kelly Crandall, so I can guarantee you we're going to talk a little bit of pro wrestling today. Weird, right? I know. So uh, to make up for the shenanigans that's going to happen in that interview, uh, we've got Red Bull Straight Rhythm winner Shane McElrath. He is going to be calling into the show. Definitely looking forward to catching up with him. We're going to talk 2019, what's on tap for him, and had that big, big win there at Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Also got my general tire teammate, Mr. Ryan Beat, coming off a championship season that he locked up there in Phoenix at Wild Horse Motorsports Pass. Uh, uh, stoked to have Mr. Ryan Beat on the show today to talk about his big championship and what's to come for him and his program in 2019. Not only that, but we have some Formula One to talk about. I know we don't talk about a lot of Formula One in the show, but the U.S. Grand Prix happened this weekend out there at Coda, and you can bet your ass that we are going to talk about it. It was probably one of the best Formula One races I have seen in a very, very long time. So looking forward to talking a little bit about the U.S. Grand Prix today. If you got questions, hit me up at Jim Beaver 15 on Twitter, and we will get them answered in the show, and we will be back after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. 
Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti a 268 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine rockets the wrx around corners and down straightaways a race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged subaru boxer engine keeps the wrx sti a rally legend the subaru wrx and wrx sti it's not a sibling rivalry it's a tag team Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast. And be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor, everybody's favorite motorsports radio show. Thanks to everybody for tuning in today. I uh, got a new microphone in front of me, so hopefully, uh, maybe maybe things sounding a little bit different. Finally, decided, uh, you know, actually, Jimmy, you're making a career out of this whole radio business. You probably ought to have a proper microphone. So uh, in comes this. Uh, crazy $700 microphone that's on this big boom and everything else. So if I sound a little bit different, um, that is why. So hopefully uh, hopefully things improve a bit with the audio quality. I don't know. Uh, you know, in the test runs, things have been uh, pretty solid. I don't know if you'll be able to make, you know, make much difference out of it, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it does make a difference. Anyways, uh, thank you guys once again for tuning in. Uh, big week of racing uh, this past weekend with the U.S. Grand Prix. We had uh, Lucas Oil wrapping up their season, uh, I guess the West Coast Series, uh, Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series, Midwest Short Course League, uh, that wrapped up uh, a month and a half ago at uh, Crandon. Um, so Lucas kind of wrapping up things uh, there with Short Course, and uh, which leaves us to, uh, I guess, one massive off-road race left this year, uh, which is the Baja 1000 with uh, Short Course and Desert, both uh, kind of being uh, wrapped up for the most part at this point. I guess you got you got Perump at the end of the year for off-road people, but uh um yeah, it's I don't know. It's just one of those like uh you know, people kind of test for next year and things like that. And then you got Dakar. Uh, I got to reach out to my boy Toby Price see if we can get him on the show to talk some Dakar rally here at some point um before he uh, gets totally locked in that Dakar zone, but uh, I do want to make a, uh, this is an off-road slash IndyCar announcement, Um, but we've been teasing this thing for months. It it actually seems like a month, but it's been a few weeks now. I think we broke the news on the Down and Dirty Radio Show website and social media, Um, but Alexander Rossi, it is formal now. They they Actually, the press release is out. They got a video out. Alexander Rossi will be racing the Baja 1000, just like uh, we had said, uh, with the factory Honda Ridgeline guys. I know we even talked did a whole segment last week, and it wasn't, I don't even know if it was quite formal yet. Uh, But now it is like officially formal, formal, formal. So I guess now we can officially talk about it. Not that we haven't been, but uh, actually have... uh, Talked with uh, Rossi's people recently. He will be a guest on the show here in the next couple of weeks. So uh, definitely looking forward to having Alexander on. I know he's tested that uh, ridge line, uh, so it should be interesting to see uh, you know what he thinks of uh, of you know the whole off road thing and you know and and you know how was to drive that thing right? I mean, it's got a sequential gearbox. He's used to that with the Indy car, but uh, total different world for him. So definitely looking forward to uh, hearing his feedback on that and um you know a whole lot more so uh i know you know obviously we've got uh, u.s grand prix to talk about we'll probably grab that in the next segment uh straight rhythm this was a big one man it's it's kind of weird you know we've went from kind of off season pro motocross wrapped up you know you roll with supercross from a1 all the way through may uh cap things off at vegas and then like literally a week or so later boom it's outdoors and then you go all summer long with outdoors and then it's like boom dead stop no motorcycle racing and then you've got October rolls around, and then we've been on a bend of the past three weeks. We had MX of Nations that was actually on U.S. soil, 
Uh, then you've got Monster Energy Cup. That's the biggest Supercross race in the world. Million dollars on the line. And then you go to Red Bull Straight Rhythm, which was this past weekend in SoCal. So um, you go from nothing to then all of a sudden a bender of like three events. And uh, I know we've got a bunch of uh, the guys. I know I hear uh, Chad Reed going down to uh, Australia. It sounds like Villapoto is going to go down to Australia. I, I'm wondering what the deal is with Ryan Villapoto, you know? Um, you don't hear a lot from Villapoto uh, after he went over and raced in Europe, you know, and kind of retired. And now all of a sudden you see him sneak into Monster Energy Cup. Uh, ran pretty well there. Uh, you see him go to straight rhythm where he finished, uh, I believe, third place. Um, so you wonder, like, did Ryan Villapoto recharge his batteries? And are we going to see him, like, come back to Supercross? Like, maybe he was just burned out and needed a breather? Like, I don't know. But, I'm, uh, you know, and now he, like, so, you know, he, he went to uh, Monster Energy Cup. He went to straight rhythm. And now... Now he's going to Australia to race, it sounds like, and do uh, you know a couple of their big events down there. So I wonder, Ryan Villapoto, who was off the grid and uh, you know didn't have a whole lot to do with anything as far as uh, you know riding a dirt bike goes, now all of a sudden the guy's back, kind of. Um, so I would say the next logical step is to hit for him to run Supercross. Now, will that happen? I don't know. It could be wishful thinking for me and uh, every other Supercross fan on the planet. Um, but uh, definitely makes you wonder. Like, most guys don't do that. You know, Dungy, he came out of retirement for straight rhythm, right? Like, Pastrana goes and do, does straight rhythm. Like, to me, that's that's like the one-off you can do. You know what I mean? And, and I don't think it takes a ton of training. Um Obviously, these guys are the best riders on the planet, or some of them. But you know, it's not like something where you got to go in and you know put in the time like you have to to, to race Supercross. You know, um, so you practice a little bit, and uh, you know, and you just show up and see what you've got. You know, but I, I wonder, I wonder what what the end game here is with Ryan Villapoto. Like, th- there's got to be a reason, or is he just having fun? And if he is, props to him. But it makes you wonder what uh, what is to come for uh, Mr. Ryan Villapoto. So um, that is definitely one of the big storylines this offseason. Uh, obviously, he's dabbled in off-road racing as well. So we've seen him uh, We've seen him in a 6100 truck in, uh, in Baja and things like that. So, you know, obviously the guy's having a ton of fun, but makes you wonder what is to come for Mr. Ryan Villapoto. So, um, yeah, so that was uh, some big news. And then uh, obviously we're, uh, you know, I guess my schedule for this radio show and my podcast and things like that. We've been killing it on the podcast front some big guests uh make sure and um you know go over there and check out project action i uh, will talk more about that later in the show but um sema week next week is is crazy for me it's crazy for anybody in the automotive industry um so i've got camp razor this friday if you're listening in national syndication i'm already there um out at glamis uh, anybody that's got a razor and is in the southwest hey go to camp razor on friday or saturday or both days of the whole weekend uh it's definitely worth it i will be there friday i'm going to be doing a live show it won't be live but uh we're recording it live obviously how do you how do you record something not live i don't i don't know if that's possible um but it sounds like i'm going to have a it's a really interesting concept. You guys have been asking for it. We're going to try something out for next year. So uh, myself and Matt Martelli with Mad Media, the Mint 400, UTV Underground, that Matt Martelli, we're going to sit down and we're going to have a roundtable discussion with RJ Anderson, Mitch Guthrie, and Kristen Matlock. Um, and it's probably going to be 45 minutes to an hour, um, and we're going to record it for a podcast, right? That's great. You guys will listen just like you always do. Thank you. But we've got the Mad Media crew, and we are going to have a video camera that's plugged into our mixing board. They're going to pull the audio out, and they're going to film the entire thing. And we're going to drop the whole thing either on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram TV, maybe all three. So, uh, yeah, so that's coming. So you're going to be wanting to look out for that in the next couple of weeks. And uh, then turn around next week, Tuesday at SEMA, 10 a.m. If you guys want to check us out live, Tiffany Stone and I will be at SEMA at Vision Wheel. And we will be inter- – so far we've got two guests lined up, Rob McCachran and Keegan Kincaid. We've got a few others that are, uh, that are slotting in too. I can't uh, – some big guests. Uh, I can't really reveal the names. But we will be doing a uh, recorded radio show there uh, for release on our channels as well. So – 
Um, next week, there will be no national show on Tuesday. I will be at SEMA, um, but we will be doing uh, radio there, and i got a ton of content we will be dropping. Project Action Schedule will be uh, just the same as it always is, um, and I'll let you know as far as the Down and Dirty Radio Show release schedule as we get closer. But, uh, yeah, we got a, a lot of content coming um, from uh, you know Camp Razor, SEMA Show, and such. Uh, Monday night, I will be at uh, SEMA, or actually at the Off-Road Hall of Fame Awards Banquet, so uh, if you guys want to uh, um, check that out. If you you know you don't have your tickets yet, you're going to be at SEMA Monday night, South Point. It is definitely worth it. Got some legends getting inducted into the Off-Road Motorsports Hall of Fame. Um, if you don't have your ticket, I believe they're almost sold out. There are some tickets left, though. So if you're interested in going, you're going to be at SEMA. You're going to be in the area of Las Vegas Monday night. Um, yeah, I will say it is a black tie affair. You know, you got to have a suit jacket. You got to dress nice. Don't show up in your jeans and your flip-flops. Um, but it is definitely worth the $150 ticket at price. I believe it's $150. I should know this. But Ricky Johnson and I will be the hosts of that. Um, so if you guys have an opportunity to go out, check it out. Um, it is worth the ticket price. I'm telling you guys, it is a great night. They've got a silent auction. And if you want to hang out with the Robbie Gordons and uh, Ricky Johnsons and uh, Johnny Campbells, I mean, legends, ever, you know, the greatest off-road drivers in the world, Bryce Menzies, you know, those guys, BJ Baldwin, they're all going to be there. So I'm just telling you. Um, like if you want to hang out, you know, with some of the, you know, I guess quote unquote, have dinner uh, with some of the biggest names in the sport. That's the way to do it. Go to the Off-Road Hall of Fame banquet. Just saying, throwing it out there and you get to listen to me, you know, and Ricky Johnson talk for a couple of hours. So, um, but yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, so I got a big, big week ahead with SEMA and uh, Off-Road Hall of Fame, Camp Razor, lots of stuff happening on this end. Thank you guys for uh um, for all the support of all the uh, projects that I have. But uh, we are going to take a short break. We come back. We're talking uh, straight rhythm and uh, the U.S. Grand Prix when we return here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by, you guessed it, Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it, so when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. Are you looking for a place to push yourself behind the wheel and see how your driving skills stack up? Dirtfish Rally School is that place. Located on 315 acres of pristine automotive playground at the foot of the Cascade Mountains in Snoqualmie, Washington, right outside of Seattle, Dirtfish Rally School is a one-of-a-kind place where everyone from first-time drivers to seasoned professionals like Bucky Lassick and Antoine Lestage can push themselves to their limit. Whether driving the high-performance rally-prepped all-wheel drive Subaru Impreza STI is what you're looking for, or you'd rather hang it all out in the rear-wheel drive Subaru BR Z's, Dirtfish Rally School has something for everyone. Classes are available from two hours to three full days and feature instructors with over 150 years of combined racing experience. Whether you're looking to become the best and get an edge on the competition or just looking to freshen your skills behind the wheel, Dirtfish Rally School is the place to go. For more information on registering for classes, visit Dirtfish on the web at dirtfish.com or to check out the latest happenings from Dirtfish, follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dirtfish Rally. Anywhere is possible. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire's wide variety of tires for whatever it is that you drive. Whether you're looking for off-road capability balanced with impressive on-road performance or ultra-high performance offering all-season traction designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has what you need to get where you're going. General Tire, providing anywhere is possible with a down-and-dirty radio show since 2012. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready, 305-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. 
Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. And we are back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. And you know, I got to say, I know a lot of you, I know how you buy your auto parts. You just get in the car, you drive to your local auto parts house, and uh, you know you go through all the rigmarole that has to deal with it. You deal with somebody that probably doesn't know what they're talking about. You know more about cars than they do, but yet they're trying to sell you auto parts. Let me tell you, that's a pain in the butt, and you're paying way too much. You know what? I discovered GoParts.com, and since then, I'm t- saving a ton of money, and you guys know me. You know me well enough to know I go through a lot of auto parts. Now, I know what you're thinking, Jim. They're online. How is the customer service? Well, I got to tell you, I had the same concerns until I tried them out and I use them. Believe me when I tell you, the service is second to none. In fact, nine out of 10 of their customers polled said they would not only use GoParts.com again, but they'd also recommend GoParts to uh, all their friends and family. So look, they've been around for more than a decade. You know what they're doing. GoParts, this is why we wrench. That's Go-Parts.com. Go-Parts.com. Check them out. You'll be glad you did. It will change the way you buy your auto parts. Guaranteed. Take it from me. Um, So, yes, uh, we had a lot of racing going on this weekend. I know we kind of uh, already started talking a little bit about uh, Red Bull straight rhythm, so I guess we should roll right into uh, that. But I guess, uh, you know, we'll talk more about this with Shane McElrath uh, coming up. He's going to be in hour number two. We got uh, Ryan Beat here in hour number one. We've also got Kelly Crandall uh, in. Hour number two as well. Um, but, yeah, so uh, straight rhythm. You know, the big thing about this year is, you know, they, they, in the past they've had kind of the open class. I know Pastrana a couple years ago when he came and did straight rhythm, he raced on a two-stroke, right? It's Pastrana. It's two-stroke smoke, man. That's all Mr. TP199 will race is a two-stroke. Um, you know this. That's just Travis's staple. If he was on a four-stroke, you'd be wondering if the guy's sick, what's going on. Like, Trav, Travy P, what is going on? You're on a four-stroke. Trav don't do four-strokes. Trav does two-strokes. That is just the way Mr. Pastrana works. So he showed up on a 500cc monster at uh, Straight Rhythm. And I remember that one because it's iconic. Uh, he actually backflipped the finish line. Um, so, you know, that that's yeah, it's Trav. It's him and Levi LaValle. You just got to backflip it, right? If you you just gotta flip it, that's just the way these boys work. Uh, remember Lavalley at X Games? He's in snowcross and he's cruising around there and uh, just decides to throw a backflip in the middle of the race. Like who does that? Levi Lavalley. Who does that? Travis Pastrana. These two guys they they just they like to flip. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So two strokes have kind of dabbled in uh, in straight rhythm, uh, you know, off and on. So I guess uh, the powers that be decided, hey, let's make Red Bull straight rhythm. All two strokes this year, instead of uh, having a 250 class, a 254 stroke class, I should say, and then like an open class where it's a run what you brung, um, they decided we'll, we'll just make it a 125 and a 250 class. Old school supercross and motocross, I dig it. Um, so, uh, you know, they had the 125 class and they had the uh, 250 class. Well, Mr. Shane McElrath decided uh, that uh, he was going to uh, run the 250 two stroke class. He won uh, the 250 four-stroke class last year, uh, so you've got him in. Uh, then you've got a couple of heavy hitters. Well, you had Ronnie Mack, who I don't know what the hell happened to Ronnie Mack. Poor guy is not having a good month. Uh, you know, got booted out of MX of Nations. Uh, now, all of a sudden, at Red Bull Straight Rhythm, um, he said they wouldn't let him race because he didn't practice. I don't know what's going on. I've heard it's uh, rumors that it's injuries and all kinds of things, but Ronnie Mack did not race. He was there. He was slated to, and something's going on with Mr. Ronnie Mack. Poor guy. Like, he's going to need a shrink before this is over. He, uh, um, he's not having a good month. Poor Ronnie Mack. He just wants to ride his damn dirt bike, and nobody will let him do it. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Ronnie Mack was there, but the big one's Shane McElrath, obviously. You talk to Shane, and Shane will say he wasn't a favorite going in. You talk to me, and I said it on Twitter. I did. Chris Leone, who writes for the website, he said, Jimmy, who do you think we should watch out for in straight rhythm? And I put down three names. I said Villapoto and Dungey and McElrath. Boom. I did that. That was before the race even started. I named the three guys, and guess what? One, two, three. Don't argue with me. 
I know my straight rhythm. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, guess what happened? Those guys finished one, two, and three. But, you know, we talked earlier about Villapoto. He came back. We got Dungy. He came back. Obviously, Dungy's a Red Bull athlete. And uh, this is something right, uh, right out of Dungy's wheelhouse. Like, why not, right? Um, but, uh, you know, Shane McElrath, this dude is an animal. He's a beast. We've seen him the last two years. Granted, he doesn't have a Supercross championship. But I got to tell you, McElrath is the most impressive guy in Supercross without a championship in the last two years. This dude has just been shredding. I mean, absolutely shredding. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. I feel like he's like the guy that's just kind of flying under the radar a little bit. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking with him uh, later on in the show because – Literally, he has been so uber impressive on a damn dirt bike recently, uh, the past couple of years. And and obviously, he's got that factory KTM deal with, uh, what is it, Troy Lee, Red Bull KTM. I don't know. It's a, kind of a conglomerate thing there. It's a factory ride. Um, he's on, you know, he's on there for another, uh, you know, he signed for another year with, uh, with them. It might be longer term. I need to look into the terms of the contract. Um, but you know, he's got some stability, but Shane, I mean, he, Sugar Shane, he, he comes out every year and he's just screaming at A1. And, uh, you know, it's a roller coaster series, you know, it's so long and, uh, especially the West coast, cause those guys race and then they take a bunch of time off and then they have to come back for the last couple of rounds. At least the East coast guys, they don't start until what, like late February, early March, and then they go all the way through to May. So it's like all con constant for them. I feel bad for the West Coast guys um, because they have this big gap that they have to take off. And uh, it kind of kind of sucks, man, because it's like you, you, you know, you're riding every weekend and then all of a sudden, uh, yeah, pause, we're not going to race for six weeks. Okay, now come back. It's like, you, you know, you're blowing the rust off at that point, right? But Sugar Shane has uh, been amazing, uh, you know, coming out of the box the past couple of years. He is my early prediction to win a two 250 title this year um we you know truth uh, you know truth will come out once we uh you know open the season but uh, this dude he's definitely got to be one of the favorites so um you know he was my favorite going into straight rhythm especially coming off of his uh, uh his 250 or what would be called the 125 class this year but uh, uh shane just absolutely uh destroyed the field there uh you know and beat uh, a couple of legends i mean you know for a guy to win and then knock out dungy in the final, I mean Ryan Dungey, this dude was this dude was the greatest rider on the planet two years ago, and then Dungey just came off a win over Villapoto, who was the greatest rider on the planet a couple years before that. Like you know, I mean we're talking about the goats here. You want to talk about five or six of the greatest Supercross riders of all time? Ryan Dungey and Ryan Villapoto are both on that list. I would throw Ricky Johnson on there, Jeremy McGrath, uh, Bubba Stewart, and. Um, um, who else? And Ricky Carmichael. Those are my goats right there of all time. So, uh, I don't know. Argue with me. Tell me I'm wrong. Twitter at Jim Beaver 15. Who are your goats? I got, I've got, uh, Ricky Johnson, Jeremy McGrath, Ricky Carmichael, Bubba Stewart, uh, Ryan Villapoto and Ryan Dungey. Those are my goats right there. My six goats of Supercross. You tell me who yours are. I would love, love, love to have this argument with you guys. Or, you know, maybe I'm missing something, man. Who am I missing on this list? Those are my six goats. Uh, you know, and I could be missing somebody from early days, right? Um, you know, they, they, and there's guys that I really like. They've been guests on here. Ton of respect for guys like Damon Bradshaw. But Bradshaw, he was never quite goat worthy. I, I don't want to say, well, he'd be the first to tell you, you know what I mean? He's just, there's that elite level, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, you know, who's, who's going to be next there? Could it be Tomac? I don't know. Tomac, he's looking pretty strong. It, it very well could be Tomac, the next goat on the list. You know, there's always a guy that emerges once these big guys, uh, you know, the goats retire. So, um, but yeah, anyways, uh, it should be interesting, uh, you know, uh, to see what straight rhythm, you know, happens with that event here in the future. I was stoked to see the two strokes, Shane McElrath, you know, beating, uh, Villapoto and Dungey, massive statement for him. Uh, definitely a lot of momentum heading into this offseason uh, for Shane McElrath, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, other event. Uh, I know we only got a couple of minutes before we got to go to a break, so we're going to have to cut our Formula One talk short. But I got to tell you, F1 U.S. Grand Prix Coda, they're in Austin, Texas. If that race didn't make you a Formula One fan, I don't know what will. And the problem with that is this was the best Formula One race I've seen in a decade. 
There was so much passing there at the end. Louis Hamilton almost throwing it away. I mean, that it was so great. Big props to Kimi Raikkonen, the Iceman. I had a little fun with that on Twitter because literally no emotion Kimi is what I like to call him. And guy wins his first race in over 100 Grand Prix. No emotion. Literally straight face. They go, aren't you excited? Eh, no. Like, seriously, Kimi, have a, have a little excitement in your life, dude. You would be no fun at a party. But, uh, yeah, that, the, the, the race there in Austin, so much passing, crazy carnage and chaos to start the race. It was an amazing Grand Prix. If you guys haven't tuned into Formula One in a long time, you probably watched that and went, wow, this is awesome. The problem is it's not like that on every weekend. Um, so props to Austin, Texas for, um, you know, for building a, uh, an amazing, an amazing Grand Prix track. Um, but uh, I guess – Problem is, I think it's so much better than a lot of the other ones um, that uh, it, it makes it kind of a snooze fest for Formula One for fans across the globe uh, when they've got to tune in to uh, a lot of the other ones. I mean, things like Monaco, obviously that track is so old, there's no passing. Um, that would never be – if somebody came with that track layout in this day and age, there's no way that would get signed off on as a Formula One track. Um, but it's been there forever. It is their Indy 500. It's going to be around to stay. Um, you know, that race is one in qualifying, but – I think this new Miami track could be fun. Uh, IndyCars had, uh, you know, run there. and Or was it IndyCar or Formula I can't remember. Um, but, uh, yeah, that track uh, lends itself to um, a lot of passing opportunities. I think it's, uh, was it like modeled after Detroit? I can't remember. Um, but, uh, anyways, uh, lots of... Uh, Lots of good stuff to come for Formula One fans. We'll have Ryan Beat after the break here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at motoshieldpro.com. Since 1970, Casey Highlights has been designing and manufacturing performance lighting for off-road and motorsports. Beginning with the legendary Daylighter up until today's revolutionary Flex, Pod, and Pro 6 lighting systems, Casey Highlights offers a full line of halogen, HID, and LED lighting solutions for your off-road vehicle. Looking for the best quality lighting? Looking for the brand champions choose? You're looking for KC Highlights. Find out more information at kchighlights.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at KC Highlights. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. It's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. 
Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. You're listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. All killer and no filler. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver here, joined on the line by my general tire teammate and 2018 Lucas Oil Pro Light Champion Ryan Beat just uh, dominating uh, the 2018 Pro Light Championship out here out west in the Lucas Oil Off Road Series. So, Ryan, cool. dude, uh, what, wrapping up the championship, man, you guys got to be super, super stoked. Yeah, I'm super pumped. Obviously, this has been one that's eluded us for a long time. Um, and it's finally nice to get the monkey off our back for sure. Yeah. Well, and I know it's, dude, pro light, you and I have talked about it. You know, a lot of people want to talk pro two, pro four, you know, cause they got 900 horsepower. I look at pro light, dude. And you guys have a dog fight every single weekend. I mean, to me, that is the most competitive division in short course. Yeah, absolutely. Pro light undoubtedly is the most competitive class inside short course at this moment. Uh, you have 10 guys get, that can win this, you know, win any race at any given time. Usually qualifying, it, everybody from first to tenth is within a tenth of a second, you know. Most of the top five guys are within hundreds of seconds. So it's uh, definitely very competitive, you know. I'm, I'm very thankful to have had the success that we've had in pro Light over the years. We've been so close to winning this championship so many times, but it's finally nice to get it done. Yeah. Well, you guys, I mean, man, you have had a bit of a roller coaster season. I know at one point your shop was broken into and you had like engines and parts stolen. And then, uh, you know, you made the trip back to Cranon. I know things didn't go quite as well as you wanted to at Cranon, obviously coming off a world championship last year. Uh, you know, you guys have had some ups and downs, man. And to put it all together at the end of the season, uh, you know, and, you know, one thing I think is awesome about you is, you know, you're, you're a driver, owner, racer, you know what I mean? It, it's, you are selling on Monday sponsorship and racing on the weekend type of thing, man. This, you know, being able to put it all together, especially after a year like you guys have had, that's got to get you pretty pumped heading into the off season. Yeah, definitely. This year has been it had its ups and downs, but for the most part, it's been ups. You know, we 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 had nine out of fourteen podiums this year, so uh, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good, you know, run there we had this year. Um, four wins. Uh, so it's been a really good season for us. Um, and then to cap it off with a championship. And then not only that, last night I received uh, the Rick Huseman Award as well as Driver of the Year Award. So it's been it's been an awesome year. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, and I look at another guy, and I'm going to make this comparison, and it, you know, and I don't, you know, and I think it's a, a pretty, you know, impressive for you to be compared to him, but I know I look at how Rob Mack puts his short course programs together, and you talked about the podiums and the consistency, and, you know, and Rob, you know, you talk with Rob, and he says, look, on any, any given weekend, sometimes I know I don't have a truck to win, but he's like, you got to put yourself around the box every single weekend, and I think, you know, that's what you guys were able to do this year, you know, there had to have been weekends where you go, you know what, our setup's a little little bit off um but you were always right around the box you may not have had enough to get on that top step but you were always fighting there for at least that third step you know absolutely you know my team works very hard to give me the equipment and, and the opportunities to be around that box spot all the time you know and, and there's always going to be weekends that you're not you know up to speed to win but you make sure that you don't throw it away and that you're always sitting on the box. Yeah, you know, that being said, man, uh, you know, we're, we're rolling into the off season here. I mean, you guys with this program, I know, you know, you, you are much like me. You're very sponsor-driven and stuff like that. SEMA show's coming up. There's a bunch of stuff in this off season. I mean, I got to think a guy like you, you're not going to sit back and rest because right now it's sponsorship season. You got to make sure you got a job next year, right? Absolutely. You know, there's uh, all year long sponsorship, sponsorship season for me, but uh, – you know, definitely we got FEMA show coming up, which is awesome. I get to go there and, and do some autographs and, and hang out with, you know, a bunch of my sponsors, um, you know, and then it's right back to work. We're starting testing right away and getting ready for next year. You know, we want to come back even stronger than we were this year, um, you know, and then obviously looking at the opportunities that, that may present themselves in the near future, of you know, stepping up a class. So uh, trying to be prepared for that and starting to work towards that being the goal of stepping up. 
Yeah, well, and, and that being said, looking at short course as a whole, I mean, you know, I had the opportunity to work with Lucas and call the uh, Midwest short course races this year. You got Lucas here on the West Coast, uh, which also includes uh, the round there at Wheatlands. But, you know, I've heard rumors of the prospect of maybe like a full, almost a national series and maybe then having like a, a West and, a you know, an East championship individually. But, you know, I mean, you as a guy like, you know, that, that he's got a championship now under his belt in pro light. I mean, you know, would you be interested? in something like a national series absolutely actually my plan as of right now is to run both series whether it's one national series or two two series i plan on running both at this point dude that is uh that is good stuff to hear man and i mean and you're talking about something like that where you're bouncing back and forth east coast versus west coast i mean uh you know do you you know how, how does that work for you guys do you bring in an extra guy do you have to run a second truck or do you just uh you know, do you, you know, just put your nose to the grindstone and make things happen with the program you got? Kind of just put your nose to the grindstone and make things happen with what you got. Um, you know, fortunately enough, I've been uh, blessed to be able to have a second truck as a backup truck. So at this point, we'll have a backup truck that is my East Coast truck and then one that's my West Coast truck. And we'll just bounce back and forth between the two trucks and, and keeping them fresh and not try not to overwork everybody, but just kind of keep the program rolling. Yeah, well, and I'm looking already, knowing how, knowing you and a little bit of your driving style. And I know you got that dirt cross, dirt bike background. And I'm looking at tracks like ERX, where it's you know I know the Grease Boys call it basically Supercross for short course trucks. And I'm looking at a thing like ERX Park, and I'm going, man, this is like this is right up Beats Alley here. You know, it's like you know it's full on Supercross and trucks. So I I could, I could see you having a lot of fun in the Midwest next year. Yeah, they look like they're awesome trucks. You know, the fans back there are great. The people back there are great. And- you know, it uh, starts opening our race program to, you know, a wider demographic. It's not just a West Coast demographic at that. It's not just East Coast demographic at that. But now we're back and forth, and we're a nationwide type traveling racing organization. So, um, for me, I really enjoy the thought of Lucas doing that. I, I support it and uh, just wish him, that, you know, nothing but the best other than to uh, make sure it happens. Yeah, well, and you said something, you know, you kind of alluded to it, you know what I mean, about potentially, you know, stepping up a class. And I know you've raced both Pro 2 and Pro 4 in the past. Um, you know, I mean, something like that to take your program from Pro Light to, say, a Pro 2, I'm assuming that that would be the step you make. I, I don't know, but, um, you know, what, what's it take for you to make that step? I mean, obviously, trucks are a little bit more expensive. Motor packages are a little bit more expensive. But, I mean, what, what's it take for you to make that jump up? Realistically, it just comes down to budget. Um, I feel that we have the crew and, and personnel and people um, that we surround ourselves with uh, that can make it happen. It's just finding the budget and, and uh, you know, the sponsors and the partnerships that see fit that they want a Pro 2 or a Pro 4 program, you know. It's a, it's a very hard niche to sell. It's a very expensive niche to sell, but um, I think once people get down to it, uh, it ends up being, you know, a, a good sense-making uh, decision, you know. Um, Pro 2 and Pro 4 are very competitive class, but they're, you know, they're the big dogs. They're the Pro 2 and Pro 4 are the premier classes. So um, until you're in that class, um, you know, Pro Light's been a great stepping stone, but I look forward to going and battling as a premier racer. Yeah. Well, and, you know, in talking about something like, uh, you know, say a pro two, uh, obviously pro four, I know costs just go crazy escalate when you start going to pro four, but like, if you were to make the step to pro two, once you have the truck and you have the spares, I mean, how, I know it's more expensive to run than a pro light, but I mean, how much more expensive every single weekend is it, you know, from going from pro light to pro two, once you have everything. It's hard to say, you know, cause I haven't quite done it yet. I got a pretty good idea of it. But, you, you know, I try to plan for double is what yeah. I'm thinking. You know, if it's, you know, whatever pro light is, plan for double, you know. Um, you know, you, you look at simple things like engine cost. They're two to two and a half times the cost of a pro light engine, you know. Um, and they go half the amount of time before you need to freshen them. Same thing with transmission, same thing with gear. So, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to, hard to, to plan uh, without doing it, but always one of those things better be safe than sorry right 
Yeah, exactly. Well, and now we're going really deep down the rabbit hole of, uh, you know, short course and speculation. But I know like the Midwest, they have their pro two, uh, their pro two package, you know, with DOT tires. And then they've got that spec engine. I know Brian Deegan had mentioned something about, hey, that might not be a bad idea for the West Coast. I mean, I know there's a lot of guys on the West Coast with pro twos and, you know, and these big high horsepower engines. They don't want to see going to a spec motor. But I mean, something like that with you and a, and a new team coming in. And we've seen how fast the guys in the Midwest are with their spec engines in in pro two i mean would that even interest you more to make the jump if something like that got into play in the west coast it doesn't really matter to me i just want them to make up their damn mind (laughs) pull the trigger and go one way or the other um i do think it would be better for the sport to to go to a dot tire um and and more of a more spec engine or some sort of restrictor plate uh for the guys with the big horsepower motors yeah. Um, I don't want to see people lose out on money and have a bunch of paperweights, you know, with their expensive engines. But I also don't think that the sport can survive needing $90,000 engines, you know. So um, with that being said, they just need to make up their minds and, and make things a lot easier. But either way, I'm cool with it. Um, Pro, Four, or Pro 2 sounds super fun to run. Pro 4 looks fun to me because... Um, you get a manual transmission in the thing, and you go out there and, and, and feel like you're a race car driver. <laughs> yeah, all right. You go back to uh, banging gears like you used to on your dirt bike, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. So, uh, obviously, uh, you know, what's up next for you? we got SEMA show coming up. Uh, I know what PRI show in December. I don't know if you're doing uh, going to be at that or not, but, uh, you know, what's the next uh, month or so look like for you now that you've got this uh, big trophy to put uh, on the fireplace? Man, it's wide open. We go to Camp Razor this upcoming week. Uh, we get back from Camp Razor. We head straight to SEMA show. Get back from SEMA show. We've got I don't know, a couple weeks, and then it's off to PRI. So it's kind of a wide open. we got a, a couple trucks in the shop. We're updating and changing to the new spec rule. Um, obviously, on top of my program of testing and fine-tuning and doing the homework that we need to be doing for next year. Nice. Well, it sounds like your schedule is about like mine with uh, Camp Razor, SEMA, PRI. So I'm sure we'll uh, be seeing you at quite a few yep. events the next month, buddy. Absolutely. I look forward to it. All right. Well, thanks for calling in today, Ryan. Congrats on the championship, man. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure the people at General Tire are stoked uh, to see another uh, another championship for Team GT. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I got to give a big shout out to all of you listeners for following. Thank you. And, you know. My sponsors support me. Still sign General Tire, TMC, Smoker Performance, Competitive Metals, Ram Mounts, Lucas Oil, Super Clean, everybody. Thank you. All right, Ryan. Well, I appreciate it, my friend. We will see you at Camp Razor in a few days, buddy. And uh, uh, I guess another cold one on me when we get out to Camp Razor. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Thanks, Ryan. No worries. Thank you. Always fun catching up with Mr. Ryan Beat. Uh, you know, he and I have been teammates uh, with General Tire for – for a few years now and, uh, you know, and a few other uh, various sponsors in the past. Uh, but, you know, this kid, one thing I love about Ryan Beat is he is the uh, prototypical blue collar racer. Uh, you know, he doesn't come from a ton of money. Uh, you know, he, he's got to he's got to get sponsors. He's got to get results, uh, you know, and it all, you know, that's how he keeps himself employed. And this kid, you know, won a world championship last year at Cranon, uh, comes this year, wins that pro light championship, obviously took home the Rick Huseman award. But, you know, anybody in Lucas knows knows when Ryan Beach shows up to the track he is one of the guys to beat and uh you know I think that's one thing that uh, I really like about Ryan Beat you know is uh you know you can make it in this industry as a professional race car driver you just got to work double as hard as anybody else and Ryan Beat is definitely definitely proof of that so uh always kind of ca- fun catching up with Mr. Ryan Beat and uh you know we'll definitely see him out at Camp Razor see just another reason to go to Camp Razor see him uh, um PRI in December uh Ryan Beat will be there along with me and a bunch of other people so uh, worth uh, worth the trip for sure. So, uh, yeah, we are going to take a short break. We come back, uh, wrapping up hour number one and rolling right into hour number two here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. 
extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. For 100 years, General Tire has provided tires for your lifestyle, your adventure, your anywhere. Born from competition, the Grabber Tire offers the durability and off-road traction you demand in a tire. We put these tires to the test in the harshest off-road racing conditions to give you a tire that will make your anywhere possible. So let us take you on your next big adventure. Tweet us photos at General Tire, hashtag anywhere is possible. Because with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners and for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino on the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. And we're back here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Uh, just getting done catching up with my uh, general tire teammate, Mr. Ryan Beat, uh, in his big Lucas Oil uh, short course uh, championship uh, that he locked up this past weekend there at Wild Horse Motorsports Pass there in Phoenix. Um, definitely kind of weird having the off season now, but uh, um, speaking of short course, it is not quite the off season. If you guys uh, enjoy um, the Midwest Short Course League or Short Course, don't forget I'm voicing. I'm your host. I'm the TV host. I know, right? Somebody decided it was uh, uh, a good idea to put me on TV every single week. So if you tune in on Tuesdays on Mav TV, Lucas Oil Midwest Short Course League, boom, I'm calling the action along with my good friend Brent Smith. So um, you know, go and check that out, and uh, you know, you guys can uh, um, you know watch. Some, uh, some great short course racing from the Midwest. I think uh, the Cranon episodes are coming up here uh, very, very soon. Um, so you definitely don't want to miss those. I think Bark River airing right now. And then uh, Cranon stuff starts up in November, I believe, from uh, the big Labor Day weekend Cranon. So don't want to miss those. That is for certain. Speaking of not missing things, obviously, you guys are listening to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Thank you guys for that. Uh, if you haven't already, obviously we're in national syndication. We're on my website at downanddirtyshow.com. But I need you to do a favor. Go over to iTunes right now. Hit the subscribe button to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And please, please, please leave a rating or review. If you leave a rating or review, leave your Twitter, Instagram, at username in the body of the review. I'll see it and I will follow you back on social media. Same goes for my other show. That's right. I've got two shows. Project Action on Podcast One. It's a separate RSS feed. But please subscribe to that show as well. It's a little bit different 
different, more long-form interviews, but I think you guys will really enjoy it. Everything from race car drivers to action sports athletes to movie stars, you name it, they are guests on that show. Uh, last week I had an interview with Victoria Arlen. You guys know her from ESPN. Uh, she's worked for X Games, ESPNW. Um, you know, she's a host and a commentator there. She's got a book out now. Um, and she's just an amazing personality. She's been on uh, Dancing with the Stars. Her story and, uh, you know, uh, being about trapped in her body, I swear it is worth the listen over there. It will definitely change the way you approach your day, that's for sure. Um, so check that out. Uh, also got uh, Eddie Braun, stuntman coming up, AGA Buckley, Matt DeAndrea from uh, The Corolla Show, and Tori Wilson from WWE. So uh, make sure and check that out. And uh, we're going to take a short break. We come back, hour number two, here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by... Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris Razor. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back here to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Kicking off hour number two, uh, we've got uh, Kelly Crandall with Racer Magazine and Shane McElrath, your Red Bull Straight Rhythm winner, coming up here in hour number two. But before we get to hour number two, we got to get to some Lucas Oil off-road results, brought to you by our good friends at General Tire, reminding you, anywhere is possible and, uh, you know, this was a big one uh, this weekend there at Wild Horse Motorsports Pass. Uh, you know, they had uh, the $30,000 Pro 2 vs. Pro 4 Challenge Cup on Sunday and season finale for Lores. Uh, you know, big uh, big news was, is uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, R.J. Anderson uh, battling it out. We had, um, you know, for a championship, we had Rob Mack. We had, uh, uh, obviously, we had uh, my good friend Ryan Beat. Um, um, he... He was uh, well. I'm just looking through the results on the website. Actually, you know what I mean. And it was just a, it was a crazy, crazy battle. Um, obviously, Ryan Beat taking the Pro Light title. Uh, you had Rob Mack who ended up uh, with the Pro Two title. Corey Weller taking a UTV title there. So uh, it was definitely a, a, a big, big weekend. Um, R.J. Anderson actually took a Pro 2 win. Um, Rob McCacken finished sixth, and he locked up his fifth Pro Two title. Um, uh, in the Pro 4 race, you had R.J. Anderson. You know, he was kind of hanging back. Uh, Doug Mittag charged to the front, uh, was trying to take the take the title there. But uh, Mittag, he pulled off course uh, right towards the end. Um, R.J. Anderson ended up uh, taking the podium and got a Pro 4 title, his very first ever Pro 4 title. Uh, Darren Hardesty um, took a uh, Pro Buggy Championship as well. Um, obviously, uh, Corey Weller, I mentioned in uh, you know UTV Turbos. Jake Bowman take the G- took the JR1 Kart title. Um, had a bunch of uh, uh, you know challenge cups there. Uh, I guess on uh, Sunday uh, there at Wild Horse Motorsports Pass, and uh, those were uh, definitely exciting. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's all the money on the line, uh, backed into a corner. Uh, you know what I mean? You guys got to come out swinging for those challenge cups. Brock Heger took the pro light. Elliot Watson pro buggy. Uh, Jr. Two cart went to. Uh, um, Barry, uh, Paul O'Brien, and Mickey Thomas uh, took the two UTV class wins. Uh, Pro 4, um, Pro 2, it was uh, Brian Deegan. He was a class of the Pro 2 field. And, uh, you know, in the $30,000 showdown, he led from the first lap, never took uh, relinquished a spot. Uh, Kyle Duke and Mittag got by him. Um, 
and uh, you know it was just a, a great race. Leduc uh, he ended up spinning late in the race. Um, and uh, Deegan ended up holding off McCachran uh, for the win and, uh, you know, the big uh, share of the purse there. So uh, that was your Lucas Oil results. We're going to take a short break. We come back. It is uh, uh, Kelly Crannell on the line here on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host the Down and Dirty Radio Show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands-down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP 1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. It's more than just a slogan. Anywhere is possible with General Tire. General Tire's Grabber X3 Mud Terrain Tire offers aggressive styling and is engineered for durability with innovative performance features that are ready to carry you through extreme mud, dirt, and rock-covered terrain. For extreme traction that's ready for anything and rugged styling to match, look no further than the Grabber X3 from General Tire. Make your anywhere possible by visiting GeneralTire.com today. General Tire, aggressive styling with the Down and Dirty Radio Show since 2012. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready 305-horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount. Come to the island and rip it up this summer. Wakeboard Island. It's a skate park on water at Blue Water Resort and Casino. Check out the two-tower cable system that pulls you and your board over the water. No boats to watch out for. No fumes. Wakeboard Island is open to all skill levels with an open center section for beginners and for trick riders, a double side kicker in a 60-foot flat box. Wakeboard Island. The best ride this side of the Rockies. Adjacent to the River's Edge Cantina at Blue Water Resort and Casino on the Colorado River in Parker, Arizona. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Like to welcome my guest to the line, one of my guests this week, Kelly Crandall, with uh, I guess the Racing Writers Podcast and Racer Magazine. Uh, welcome to the show, Kelly. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we're finally getting to do this. Yeah, you know, and we got a lot of racing to talk today, but before we get to that, more important things. I found out you were a big wrestling fan. I'm a big wrestling fan. So we got to talk about Becky Lynch because I can't talk <laughs> WWE very often on this show. Yeah, all right. Let's go for it. We could spend like 15, 20 minutes or something about that. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's funny because, like, I, I think on my podcast, I've got my podcast and I've had, like, Lillian Garcia on, and uh, I think I'm actually getting ready to do something with Tori, Tori Wilson uh, with, this, uh, with this Evolution pay-per-view coming up. And uh, I, I've been able to dabble into the wrestling side of things a bit on my podcast, but this, the national show, like, we never touch on it. And I'm like, man, the one wrestling storyline going on right now is Becky Lynch. And I know you, you I swear, like, out of – all wrestling, this has me so gripped right now, and obviously it's got to have you pretty locked in as well. Yeah, this storyline with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, just I did 
I did not expect um, much from it, to be honest with you. And they just, ever since SummerSlam, when they pretty much gave Becky the ball and ran with it as this, you know, kind of underdog mentality, and I'm going to fight for what I want, I'm just going to do it my way. Almost a modern-day female version of Stone Cold, I know some people have compared it to. Yeah. And I love it. It's been fantastic. She, Becky Lynch is so talented, and the fact that she's now getting to show that and run with this storyline. This storyline has been, like, probably the A or B storyline of SmackDown the last two months. And that's impressive, um, not only for, you know, two women to get that attention, but the fact that the storyline is so good and it's getting such a reaction in the arenas. I mean, fans are chanting for Becky. There's no way people are going to boo her. Everything they say she's reacting to, just seeing her on the screen they're reacting to. So it's um, the storyline is just fascinating because you can – you can relate to somebody with what Becky, like what the story Becky's trying to tell of, you know, I'm sick of other people taking my spotlight. I'm sick of other people, especially my, somebody supposed to be my best friend coming in and stealing the spotlight from me. And for her to go out now and, and, and her and Charlotte just have such great chemistry. Their matches are unbelievable. They're very, um, they're very believable in, in a sense. So I'm, I'm hooked. It, it's probably to me, it's the best storyline on SmackDown right now. Yeah, I would say it's probably the best storyline in WWE right now. Like, because I I watch both shows and I dab a little bit in NXT and uh, like it's I think it's like through the whole company it's probably the best storyline. Like, I, I'm hooked. Like, I tune into SmackDown for the five to ten minute segment. You know, is going to include those two every week. Literally, that's what I'm tuning in for. Oh, absolutely. I, I agree with you. I mean, Raw, the Monday, you know, Raw is supposed to be a flagship show and it's a three hour show Monday night and it, and it's it's just. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of stalled out. You know, it's a lot of the same matches the last couple of weeks. They keep doing the same thing over and over. And, you know, I understand they're trying to push, you know, the shield and the, and they're, I'm assuming that by bringing the shield back together, that they're trying to find a way to get people to back Roman Reigns, because let's be honest. I mean, anybody who watches the WWE knows he's not a fan favorite for no. one reason or the other. So, um, that's the only reason I can explain why they brought the Shield back together is because the three of them together, uh, Seth Rollins and, and, and Dean Ambrose with Roman, I mean, everybody loves that group, right? But I just I turned on Raw the last couple of weeks, and it's the same stuff over and over. It's either Seth versus her or Seth uh, versus um, Donald Ziggler and Ron Simon. And it's just it's the same matches over and over again. The women, I'm really upset. I, the women's division on Raw has not been as strong as it was just a couple months ago. It's almost like, you know, they're back to just being, um, you know, the filler matches, and there's no storylines at all besides the Nikki Bella Ronda Rousey feud. I mean, there's absolutely nothing being built in that women's division um, storyline-wise as far as Raw goes. So I agree with you. I think Becky and Charlotte, they, again, they, they got the goal after SummerSlam when it comes to that SmackDown brand. And not only are they carrying the blue show, but um, I think that is the storyline that most WWE fans are paying attention to right now because it's so good and it's so interesting. Yeah. Well, and here, here's my segue into us talking about racing here. And I've I've been an advocate of this on this show for I don't know how long. And I think there's something that professional race car drivers can take from pro wrestling. And the way that pro wrestlers talk on the mic and – Sometimes they wear the white hat, sometimes they wear the black hat, but they have personalities and people get attached to personalities. And I figure, I feel like in, in racing and, and NASCAR's got a little more personality than other forms of racing. But I, I mean, I look at NHRA and IndyCar and I'm like, these guys need to pick a personality and roll with it. Cause that's how fans are going to get excited. That's how they're going to get latched on. That's going to, how, how you're going to build your fan base. I mean, I look at these pro wrestlers, there's not one of them that doesn't have a million plus Instagram followers. And you know, you're hard pressed to find a, uh, somebody in NASCAR with a million Instagram followers. I mean, I feel like that there's a lot people could learn from pro wrestling as far as race car drivers and the way they carry themselves with the media. Yeah, there, there's a lot of crossover there. And I would say it extends beyond just the character, which is what you're talking about. But again, that, that could be, you know, that's a whole conversation we could have for another day. And it's something I've actually talked about with, believe it or not, Paul Heyman. I talked to him last year in Richmond because his, uh, he runs a marketing and ad agency uh, in real life, I guess you would say, and they were doing marketing for uh, Richmond Raceway. And uh, I talked to Paul last year about, you know, what does he see coming from 
uh, you know, sports entertainment over into NASCAR and, and what correlation can he make? And I had the same conversation with Hermes Sadler, who's a big wrestling fan who has been in the wrestling business. And, you know, there's things that stand out such, such as how to get your fans involved, how to, you know, more engagement, things like that. Um, but going back to the character, the character part, which you're talking about, absolutely. I think, you know, personality and character, obviously in WWE, that's what it's all about because you're putting on a show. Yeah. When it comes to NASCAR, how many times, Jim, in the last couple of months or in the last couple of years, have you heard from NASCAR, somebody in NASCAR has said, well, we're in the entertainment business. And we never used to hear that. I mean, at least not when I first got into the sport. And I've heard NASCAR officials, officials actually use the entertainment word. Yeah. And if we're going to do entertainment, then you know what? You need to let your drivers go out here and be who they are. If Kyle Bush wants to go out here and talk about somebody, if Brad Kozlowski wants to go out here and get in the microphone and burst them called Brad Kozlowski and ass, you need to play that up as much as possible. And I understand, you know, part of this is a family sport. But at the same time, as long as it's not something, you know, too crazy, too far off the edge, too, you know, rated on or whatever it is, we need to be capitalizing on all of that. You know, the fight at, in, the, in the, what, the 79 Daytona 500, gosh, we still play that highlight reel today, right? And, um, you know, I want I want a driver who, look, some, you know, some drivers are going to be more exciting than others. If, if your personality is just your mess and you're so self that's fine. But if you're, if you're a damn good race car driver and you can give me a little something on the microphone, all right, go for it. But if you're a Kyle Bush, if you're a Brad Kozlowski, if you're you know, anybody, I mean, let these guys go out there and speak their mind. And, I, and I, personally, I think what happened is that when we got into this phase a couple years ago where drivers were being fined for some of their comments, yeah. I think mean, it's what kind of scared a lot of them off. Is they're kind of, you know, they, they kind of shut up after a while because they would make comments about, you know, the, the race calls or the, or the product or whatever it was. And obviously, NASCAR doesn't want you, you know, they don't want their product, so to speak, to be to be ripped to shreds because you want to sell fans on their watching. But I think when they started kind of trying to muzzle driver and, you know, say, hey, we don't want this talked about, or hey, everything's great, or hey, send this message to fans, this not authentic. And, and, and I could be wrong, but from the outside looking in, it seems like drivers just kind of gave up. And, you know, why am I going to go out here and, and try and please people? Why am I going to go out here and, and try and show who I really am? If I'm either A, going to be fine by NASA, or B, now in the day and age of social media, going to be ripped to shreds on Twitter and Facebook and Reddit and, and message boards and comment sections on, on you know, uh, on articles and all that stuff. So um, I'm probably kind of rambling, but I just, yeah, I... I I like your point there about we need character and personality, but I wonder if at the same time we're kind of we're kind of too far gone because we've almost done it to ourselves. And we'll be back with more with Kelly Crandall after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. You want extreme performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels? The Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it. You can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust, and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up? I'm Ronnie Renner, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up, everybody? Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for a 15% discount the subaru wrx and wrx sti 
The 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Whether you're looking for a tire that balances high performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in wet and dry conditions, or a summer performance tire designed with a driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the all-new G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, cruising with a down and dirty radio show since 2012. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partnered with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at MotoShieldPro.com. Like what you hear? Catch all the back episodes of the Down and Dirty Radio Show on Apple Podcast, and be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Jim Beaver catching up here with Kelly Crandall from Racer Magazine and the. Uh, racing writers podcast also nascar pit reporter uh talking a little bit about uh, personalities and motorsport well and, and i think case in point i don't know how much nhra you follow but a good friend of mine he's been a guest on the show and uh steve torrance you know and he's just destroying everybody in top fuel right now uh you know in their version of the playoffs but you know steve feels like he was wronged last year and this guy comes out and he is the best interview because he's a pull no punches tell it like it is texan and uh, he's got the fans rallied behind him right now because he gets in front of the mic and you know exactly what's going on in his head he doesn't pull punches <laughs> he he doesn't exactly say what the nhra wants to hear but steve's being steve and he's being real and i think that authenticity the fans have latched on to and i think you know they are really rallying around him just because they know they're getting the real steve torrance yeah no that's awesome i'll have to go uh, find some, some clips or some stories I, I, you know, from a journalist perspective in NASCAR, I want the same thing. Like, I want a driver to tell me exactly how you feel. And I understand you have you have sponsors and team members and people who probably don't want you going out there and saying certain things. But again, at the same time, like, tell me how you really feel. Like, if you're pissed off and angry, and if you think somebody did you wrong, if you think somebody's out there driving over their heads or acting like an idiot, well, it's great that I can hear you say that on the radio in the heat of the moment. But then when you get out of the race car, Tell me about it. You know, tell yeah. me more. Expand on it. Go over there and talk to that driver and tell us what's going on. Like, if you just don't like a guy, which is why I respect Kyle Busch, uh, because Kyle said it last year at Homestead before the title race, when it was him, Truex, uh, Martin Truex, Kevin Harvick, and Brad Kozlowski. And, and people, you know, we were trying to pretty much poke the bear when it comes to Kyle um, because – we all know Kyle's that have had their problems. And Kyle just turned around and finally said, hey, sometimes you just don't like a guy. And that's awesome. And that was a headline all weekend. And you know what? I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. Because sometimes you don't. Some, you know, look, Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch can sit up there and say they're good friends and they've not, and, you know, they're in a much better place than maybe they were a couple years ago. And that's great. You know, Brad Kozlowski can sit up there and say, you know, try and, and, and be politically correct because he doesn't want to anger anybody. But the guy next to him, he turns around and says, you know what, I just don't like the guy. And that makes me smile because, A, I've got something to write about, and B, that's genuine. And um, I think the sport needs more of that. I think the sport needs more of drivers saying what they feel. And, again, you know, I'll go back to it. I know we have sponsors, and I know we've got NASCAR to worry about. But in a perfect world, Jim, if we, if, if we could have what we want, it would be – more drivers getting out of the race car and saying exactly how they feel, either about the race car, the racing, the racetrack, um, you know, somebody doing them wrong or whatever it is. I would love that. 
I would love to have that on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah, I completely agree. Well, talking about a weekly basis, we only got a couple of minutes left here, but I know, uh, uh, you know, this NASCAR playoff field keeps dwindling down. I mean, I, I'm kind of, kind of think Chase Elliott's got a lot of momentum right now, but uh, you know, what, what are your feelings here? We're, we're kind of winding down the NASCAR season. You know, the, things are heating up in the playoffs. Well, momentum doesn't hurt. I'll say that when it comes to Chase Elliott. The problem is, is that now we're gonna, we're, 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 we are reset. We're going into the semifinal round, and now it's all about getting a homestead. And the more I looked at the points last night as they reset, the more I looked at the at the who the eight drivers are, and I thought about these next three races, and I looked at bonus points, and I looked at the gap between Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, and Martin Truex, who are obviously the big three, as we call them this year. And you look at the gap that they have on everybody else. And I think these next three weeks, if you want to keep them out of Homestead, you've got to go win the race. It's no longer about top top tens and top fives. Because the gap with the playoff points that Kyle, Kevin, and Martin have acquired over the last 30-some-odd races, they are 30 to 40 to whatever points ahead of the cutoff line. So it's going to take a disaster for them to fall out of the top four on points. So with them running as well as they normally do, if they, if they just keep top 10, top five in everybody and leading laps over the next three weeks, which is Martinsville, Texas, and Phoenix, it's more than likely that as we've been talking about all year, those are going to be three of the four drivers in Homestead. So if Chase wants to get to Homestead, he's got to win. If Eric Almirola wants to get to Homestead, he's got to win. If Clinton Boyer wants to get to Homestead, he's got to win. So you, you kind of see where I'm going with yeah. this. I don't think points anymore are going to be enough. I really, really don't. Because I don't think Kyle, Kevin, and Martin are going to have bad enough days over the next three weeks if they don't win, which we know is possible at any, at any time. Um, granted, they haven't done that the last couple of weeks. But again, they haven't had to. It's all about, you know, survive in advance. They've had the playoff points to fall back on. So, um I think that's kind of what I'm gonna, what's going to be my column this week on racing or comps. I'll give you a little teaser there. But, yeah, I think we're now at the point of the season where, you know, hey, we try and say winning matters all year, but it really matters right now because those points, that point spread is pretty big. Chase Elliott just won a race, right? He won two races in the last three weeks. He's the fourth guy right now on the grid that will go to Homestead, but his, it's his point advantage over the, actually over the next three guys behind him, so fifth, sixth, seventh, starting this round in Martinsville is only three points and he just won two races and it's only three points. Yeah. So, uh, again, I think uh, one guy will obviously make it to Homestead on points. Um, but if you want a shot and you want to keep those, go- those big three out of there, then, then somebody of these other four or five drivers are going to have to win. They're going to have to go out and win these next three races. Yeah. I agree. It's uh, going to be an interesting uh, shootout here as uh, NASCAR winds down. Kelly Crandall, tell us uh, where people can find out more information on you, your podcast, your column there with Racer Magazine, and uh, on social media. Yeah, so Racer.com, I am there each and every day. We've always got something going on. It's, it's that time of the season. So Racer.com, uh, the F1 guys have that covered. I'm over in the NASCAR section, so please check that out. Like I said, we're, we're getting down to it. Four races to go. The championship's going to be decided here pretty soon. And the podcast, yes, the Racing Artists podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Google, uh, TuneIn, uh, lots of places, I believe. Uh, the folks over at Centire Media have done a fantastic job helping me get that onto other platforms. So the Racing Writers podcast, um, different drivers, different personalities within the sport. So I've had Larry McReynolds. This week's guest is Christopher Bell. I've had Alex Bowman. I've had, oh, my gosh, I can't even remember I've had so many guys. Um I, I honestly am blanking right now, but last <laughs> more to come, I've, I've recorded interviews with Johnny Sauter. That's still to come. I've got a really great two-parter that will be in the off season of a career retrospective with Elliot Sadler. Um, some great stuff there. So uh, Christopher Bell is this week. Uh, last week um, was Ryan McGee of ESPN talking about the, the book he co-authored with Gail Earnhardt Jr., which I thought was uh, so insightful. Uh, Ryan's conversation about, um, about the book uh, and I highly recommend the book. I read it in one day because I just, it was unbelievable. I can't believe Dale Jr. was racing as in the condition he was racing. Um, not only 2016 when we when we heard of his concussions, but uh, the last couple years. So very insightful there. Um, I've had Haley Deegan on. So yeah, the podcast is, is growing. Uh, so awesome. Um, thanks for letting me spread the word on that. And um, 
Twitter is at Kelly Crandall. You can follow me and yell at me over there. I got plenty of that. <laughs> uh, racing talk, wrestling talk, and Instagram is my name as well. And I've got a Facebook page as well. So I'm a little bit everywhere trying to spread the word on, on the crazy times of NASCAR. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Kelly. I appreciate the time. And I think we definitely need to uh, do this a little bit more often. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Like I said, I'm glad we finally got to do it. And at any time, you just uh, send me a message and, and we'll make it happen. Always fun catching up with Kelly Cran. I, I can't say always fun. It's the first time I've caught up with her. But, uh, yeah, you, yeah, it's funny. We, we started that out. We did what? Like the first third of the interview was us talking about pro wrestling, which – it's funny because I figured I'm the only grown adult pro wrestling fan left in the world, but I guess they sell out arenas and everything else and podcasts, stuff like that. So it can't be all kids, you know, paying for those. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, um, yeah, fun catching up with her. And you guys know I've been an advocate of that for so long. I don't care if you're a good guy. I don't care if you're a bad guy. Be some kind of guy or girl. And, uh, you know, have some personality. That's what gets the fans latched on. They want to know you. They want they want to love you or they want to hate you, one of the two. But, uh, you know, and, and it really doesn't matter if they love you or hate you. It's as long as they are talking about you. You know, you, you look back, you got guys like uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr., man, the man in black, right? He was, uh, he was feared, the intimidator, right? He wore the black hat, and he did it well. Uh, people loved, to, loved Dale Earnhardt, and they loved to hate Dale Earnhardt, but I can tell you there was nobody that was neutral on Dale Earnhardt. And then, you know, you, you had people like Danica Patrick, very much the same, you know. Not only was she a trailblazer for women in motorsport, but uh, you know she was uh, she was a bit of a badass. And uh, you know Danica Patrick, she um, she wore that black hat at times. She did it well. She was a no nonsense, tell it like it is. I will tell you if I don't like you, I'm going to tell you what's wrong, and I'll tell you what's right. And uh, you know you want to know why Danica Patrick made waves in this industry. It's because she just didn't slide into the industry, and she wasn't just a girl who drove a race car and did it well. She was a girl who drove a race car and did it well, and she had an opinion, and she wasn't scared to state it. And I think that is why Danica Patrick was as big as of a personality as she was, because you wanted to hear what she was going to say. If she crashed out of the race, man, you were glued to your TV. Man, what's Danica going to say? What's Danica going to say? You know, everybody wanted to know. They wanted to see that interview. Same thing goes with uh, Dale Earnhardt Sr. You know, like she had talked about, you know, both the Bushes. You know, you you love uh, Kyle and Kurt Bush, you know, because they, they got a bit of an edge. You know, they got a bit of an attitude. And uh, you want to know what, uh, what they're going to say. You know, people tune in for those interviews. Whether you love them or hate them, you want to know what they're going to say. And that's what creates creates a fan base and that's what makes uh you know uh, for a winner you know that that's how you you get larger than life and become this personality and ultimately that's how the sponsors come in and get involved and back you so uh lots pro race car drivers can learn from pro wrestling all right we're going to be back after this on the down and dirty radio show powered by polaris razor performance, reliability, and the most fun you can have on four wheels, the Polaris Razor brings it to you. But you don't need to take my word for it, you can take theirs. I'm Tanner Faust and I choose the Polaris Razor because it's the most fun you can have with a steering wheel. What's up, I'm Ronnie Renner and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the sickest, most reliable side-by-side on the planet. What's up everybody, Heavy D from Diesel Brothers. Listen, I'm on Team Razor because it's hands down the best piece of machinery on the planet. I'm RJ Anderson, and I choose Polaris Razor because it's the most fun, most capable machine. Action sports stars, TV personalities, and some of the best race car drivers in the world all choose Polaris Razor because it's the ultimate combination of power, suspension, agility, and fun. Find out more information on the web at PolarisRazor.com or follow at Polaris Razor on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and use the hashtag RazorLife to share your story. Life is all about sound, the sound of sports, the sound of the racetrack, and the sound of your vehicle. Don't drive around listening to this. Drive around listening to the sound of performance. Gibson Performance. Gibson Performance Exhaust is the company who can turn this into this. Remember that life is all about sound, and Gibson Exhaust is the sound of performance. Check out your next catback exhaust system, headers, muffler, or UTV exhaust at GibsonPerformance.com and get more power and more sound. 
When looking for a new wheel for your off-road vehicle, car, truck, or UTV, the choice is easy. You choose what the pros use. Rob McCachron, Keegan Kincaid, and myself, Jim Beaver, all exclusively use Vision Wheel, whether we're dominating Baja, taking the cup at Cranon, or shredding UTVs. Vision Wheel's trend-setting designs and durability will set you apart from the competition and your friends. Check out visionwheel.com or at Vision Wheel on social media to learn more. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI. A 268-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race-ready, 305-horsepower, turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry. It's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Hey, this is Jim Beaver, host of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Getting down and dirty on the racetrack is all fun and games until it's time to get the dirt off. I know it all too well, which is why I partner with MotoShield Pro, the leaders in nanotechnology solutions on the racetrack and in off-road to combat mud and dirt buildup on my vehicles. MotoShield Pro keeps us from taking unnecessary damage and spending extra energy on cleaning. No matter the weather or the surface, having proper protection on all my vehicles saves me plenty of reprep time in a sport where every second counts. Prep your vehicle like a pro. Learn more at MotoShieldPro.com. Thanks for tuning in to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Available live online in syndication on networks across the U.S. and available internationally on the American Forces Network. Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. I'd like to welcome uh, one of my guests this week, the man of the hour, Mr. Shane McElrath to the show. How's everything going, my friend? Man, it's going good. It's a uh, normal Monday out here. I'm a uh, little sore. Uh, my, le- my legs are a little sore from the straight rhythm, but um, back to work this morning. Back to the grind of things. I know it seems like we... I guess I ought to apologize because I think every time we've had you on the show, I think it's been about three or four times now. It's like after a big win, I feel like you you probably think, man, this guy only texts me when I'm when I'm coming off a big win. But that means you actually have something to talk about, man. I mean, Red Bull straight rhythm going into yeah. this thing, man. You've got to be pumped on walking away with a victory. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I uh, especially uh, after not really feeling very good on the bike, um, the two stroke was really different and uh it took me a while to really i i really didn't get comfortable on until like when we were uh down to the eliminations at night so um i was really nervous about it and really uh just didn't feel good on the bike but um i was uh pretty impressed with myself just kind of how i adapted throughout the day and and got better each run and just uh it was it was cool to get to race Dungey in the finals and um, even beat him. That that was not really something I expected to do, but I uh, I never thought that I couldn't do it. So it was really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and we'll talk about Dungey in a minute because we got a lot to talk about there. But going back, I mean, to this two-stroke thing, I mean. You know, I think fans were excited, you know, because two strokes have been out of Supercross for quite some time. But, I mean, you know, this isn't even something like, do you have a two stroke that you play on here and there? I mean, you know, some guys I know, you know, like Pastrana, he loves to play on one, you know, and a lot of guys prefer to. But, I mean, you, when you're training for Supercross and outdoors, I mean, you generally train on what you're actually racing, right? I mean, this has had to have been way different for you. Yeah, no, and that's the thing is I, I don't normally ride anything unless I'm training. And when I'm training, I'm not going to ride something that I'm not going to race. So um, I've never – actually, I, w- I would say that I, uh, I've i maybe done a handful of laps on a 252 stroke ever. Um, I've ridden 125s and stuff, but a uh, 252 stroke, I haven't ridden, ridden one. And then to uh, jump on it on Wednesday – uh, of last week for the very first time on Supercross and pretty much just, all right, go get the feel of it. And then there's like, I wrote it for about 15 minutes. And then, uh, the next day on Thursday was, uh, straight rhythm practice. And so we, we put in, uh, about 30, 
30 or 45 minutes worth of riding on Thursday, and then I had to show up and race it on Saturday. So it uh, it was pretty different, but it was a lot of fun. And I know that uh, that all the fans and everybody said that it was so much better this year just because everybody was on two strokes. Well, it probably even the playing field. I don't want to say even the playing field, but, you know, everybody was starting from ground zero because I got to think a lot of guys were like you, and they may have ridden two strokes some years in the past, but it, it's been a while, you know, so it was, it was kind of taking everybody out of their element and, you know, throwing everybody for a loop, right? Yeah, and that's, that's kind of what was somewhat comforting was uh, the very first year they had the straight rhythm, I did, uh, I did the, the premier class, but I was on a 350 that year, so I didn't really expect to do much, and I I got eliminated um, in the quarterfinals, I think. But um, then this year, it's like okay, well everybody's everybody's pretty similar. Not not really anybody here rides a two stroke mainly, and so that was that was kind of comforting and. Um, it was nice to see that other people throughout the day kind of had their struggles because it, it it gave me a little bit of confidence that, okay, well, I'm not the only one that feels like a, a goof troop out here and, like, I don't know what I'm doing. So um, that was that was at least somewhat comforting. Yeah, well, and, you know, and I, I mean, and I know straight rhythm is a little bit different every year because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, last year at straight rhythm, you were on the 250, uh, this one they were running four strokes. You took a victory, right? So you're rolling into this year, you're stepping yep. up a division. You know, how, you know, how was that? I mean, and what's the difference? Obviously, the course layout, the track's completely different. So, you know, some of the things you had memorized last year, I'm sure, changed from this year. But, you know, what was the big uh, decision you, for you to step up to, uh, I guess, the premier class coming off your victory last year? Uh, well, I didn't really have a choice. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't really get to decide which one I wanted to race. Okay. Um, but the 125 is like, I mean, it was, it was a legit supercross track. Yeah. And I mean, Jason Baker and his crew did a really good job on it. And it was, it, it kind of sucked that we had some complaints about it after like practice day, because, uh, it was so good. And that's, uh, that's mainly because of the bikes, like the 125s. The first day, the 125s couldn't jump the finish line, and uh, because they were right after the whoops, and also the whoops were were good whoops if we would have been on our normal four strokes. But because we we're on the two strokes, that was a that was a big deal. And even some of the rhythms, um, we could have probably done some bigger rhythms. But that goes back to I think everybody else kind of felt the same, like they they were really not wanting to risk it a little bit, and they didn't have a good feel. So I was happy that we didn't do any any big rhythms. Um, but also the last two years before this year, they they didn't have like actual Supercross whoops, which I was kind of bummed about because I really like Supercross whoops, but it's kind of been more of rollers. Well, this year they brought the whoops back and I really enjoyed that. But then they were almost a little too big at first just because we we're on the two strokes. Well, you know, and, and talking about Dungy, I know this is, I mean, I got to say this is a, it's almost a statement win for you. I mean, you know, I look at Ryan Dungy and this guy is, uh, you know, one or, two, one, or, one or two years removed from the baddest dude on the planet. He just knocked out Ryan Villapoto, who is arguably one of, uh, you know, the baddest dudes on the planet, you know, four or five years ago. Here you go. You're into the final with Dungey, man, and then you knock Dungey out. That, that's that got to be exciting for you, man. Yeah, that was something that I didn't really uh, kind of have any expectations of. I I was pumped to be in the final, like racing Jordan Smith. I mean, we, we hate getting beat by each other, and <laughs> I was – nervous when I was racing Jordan because it's like, okay, well, this could either take me to the top or I could end up fourth. Like this could go either way. And, uh, it's like, well, then I'm, I made it into the finals and I was like, I caught myself thinking, well, man, like second place is pretty good, but I feel like I can do something here. Like I I don't just want to go ahead and settle. And that's, that goes back to, dang, this, this is Ryan Dungey. Like, I really don't know how this is going to go, but let me 
do my best and then some and kind of see how we stack up. And, uh, and after that, I was like, I did the first one. I, the, the right lane was uh, a little better than the left. And Dunn, you gave me the right lane the first uh, first run, and I was like, sweet. And I felt I felt pretty good, and that was my uh, or that was the fastest run of the day um, up until that point. And I was like, dang, that that was pretty good. Like I I uh, I didn't really expect to do that. And then the se- uh, second run, I was in the left left lane, which had just a few few little areas that were a little off. Um, and I, I had a few mistakes and Dungey beat me and, um, but then I, I got the lane choice for the third one and I was like, okay, let's, we're going to the right lane and we're, we're going to do everything we can. We're going to push through everything hard. We're going to soak up everything and really work the bike. And, uh, which is something that I like to do. I like the technicality of supercross and that's another thing is, I don't like to jump big jumps because it, it almost makes it okay. Well, uh, now the most fearless one is going to win. It's like, no, that's, that's not really the way it should be. And it's also kind of scary just with the progression of supercross as a whole and the bikes and everything. So, um, I, uh, I knew I, I had the second half of the track, like pretty dialed and I just focused on the first half and, and trying to hit it the best that I could and still be fast um because i knew once i got to the second half i could i could really push the edge a little bit and uh and be really comfortable and then i just the works on the last lap i just try to keep my front wheel off of them so i didn't lose any momentum and and it was crazy coming across the finish line well, you know, and I think you mentioned something back there. You know, you made a little bobble, and, you know, I think a Supercross race, there's so much time involved. You know, you make a, a small mistake in, say, a corner in a whoop section. You know, it's like you may lose a little bit of ground, but you got a lot of time to gain it back. But I, I feel like with straight rhythm, you know, and the way it's set up, I mean, you have to be 100% perfect, you know, to, to walk away with uh, with a win, you know. I mean, there, there's no room for mistake because the other guy is right on you and past you at that point, right? Yeah, and that's that's what is – so tough at straight rhythm is because a good run can still get you beat and that's that's what's crazy is like okay well what exactly does it take to to have a great run and it's like everybody can go fast and everybody can jump the jumps well okay for me it's like how fast can i land off of this jump and throw the bike through the next one and I mean, along with that comes like the suspension setup, the, just the power delivery of the bike and being, being in tune with how the throttle response is. And that was one of the biggest things on the two stroke is, okay, well now like those two strokes had more power than our 250S and it's like, okay, well now we got to learn to ride these that have more power in these transitions where we're trying to push through the transitions and I had a lot of times where I would go way too far and I would face into the next jump and and just screw up my rhythm and that was one of the biggest things to get used to. Well, you know, and you're coming off this big win here at Straight Rhythm. I know, uh, you know, a lot of guys are going to go down to Australia and do some some riding, you know, and, and you know some of the events down there. But I mean, we're we're off season now. I guess we got uh, what a couple of months, and then we're back at uh, uh, Anaheim for Supercross. But I mean, uh, you know, you look at your last two years, and you've been one of the guys. You've been out there. I mean, you've got a second, a third, in uh, you know, in Supercross and the points championship. I mean, what, what's the next couple of months look like for you, Shane? I mean, in, in training and in preparation for uh, the 2019 Supercross season. Um, right now we're just focused on a one. We, uh, we have a new bike this year. We got the same bike this year that the fortune has got last year. So we're, uh, we spent the last, uh, two and a half weeks on, uh, just trying to dial our suspension in, get, get, uh, get everything working good. Cause our setup last year doesn't really work on the new bike. So, um, we're just trying to get, um, dialed in as good as we can because uh next week i'm going down to florida and uh pretty much starting on boot camp so we need to have that all dialed in before i get there 
Yeah. Well, and what's boot camp entail? I mean, I, I got a feeling, you know, you're, you're getting ready for the rigors of a, a crazy super cross schedule, right? Yeah. We, uh, I mean, right now it's, it's, it's all about getting the bike dialed in, getting, uh, back in the swing of things, getting our body back, back used to the loads that we do and, and boot camp when that gets here, uh, that is after we've got everything dialed in and, and we feel good on the bike then that's where we do all our quantity work and just really build that big base because that's what carries us all through the year. Um, because once we, once we get midway in supercross and we got to start getting on outdoors, um, it's hard to, uh, up our training program at the same time because outdoors already has a bigger load on it anyway. So, um, it's more so just, being in tune with our bodies and really focusing on um, having a smooth transition throughout the year. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, Shane, to uh, call into the show. I know, uh, you know, awful busy, but uh, big congrats, uh, you know, coming off that big win there at uh, Red Bull Straight Rhythm and, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, seeing you come out swinging there at A1 in January. Yes, sir. Me too. I'm excited. And we'll be back with more after this on the Down and Dirty Radio Show powered by Polaris Razor. I'm Polaris rider Jim Beaver. I race trophy trucks professionally, host a down and dirty radio show, and also travel the country announcing motorsports events. I've seen it all, and trust me, I've done most of it. So when it comes time to relax on the weekend, nothing is better than taking time with my family in our Razor vehicles. They've got the reliability I need to just pick up and go explore the desert dunes or trail and have the capability to attack even the harshest terrain. If you're looking for some of the most reliable and safest and hands down most capable off-road machines in the world, look no further than Polaris and their award-winning lineup of Razor vehicles. Whether you want your daughter to experience off-road driving for the first time in a Razor 170 like me, take the entire family out in a Razor XP4 1000 on the weekend, or shred the desert and dunes in the all-new Razor XP1000 Fox Edition, Polaris has you handled. Take my advice and join me and some of the best drivers in the world by driving a Polaris Razor. Check out the full Polaris Razor lineup at Polaris.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Polaris. Polaris Razor. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, a 268 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine, rockets the WRX around corners and down straightaways. A race ready 305 horsepower turbocharged Subaru boxer engine keeps the WRX STI a rally legend. The Subaru WRX and WRX STI, it's not a sibling rivalry, it's a tag team. Get the latest from Subaru Rally Team USA at Subaru.com slash rally. Looking to have some fun on four wheels? Dirtfish Rally School has you covered. Packing as much adrenaline and adventure as you can handle into high-performance all-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive Subaru Rally cars is where the fun begins at Dirtfish. Just 30 minutes outside of Seattle and Snoqualmie, you'll get a chance to train up to three full days with some of the country's best instructors and be put through the high-octane rush of rally on mud, dirt, and tarmac. Get started today and call 425-888-7715 or visit us online at dirtfish.com and use code 911 for 15% discount life is all about sound the sound of sports the sound of the racetrack and the sound of your vehicle don't drive around listening to this drive around listening to the sound of performance gibson performance gibson performance exhaust is the company who can turn this into this remember that life is all about sound and gibson exhaust is the sound of performance check out your next catback exhaust system headers muffler or utv exhaust at gibsonperformance.com and get more power and more sound thanks for tuning in to the down and dirty radio show available live online in syndication on networks across the u.s and available internationally on the american forces network Welcome back to the Down and Dirty Radio Show, powered by Polaris Razor. Wrapping things up here on another edition of, uh, I don't know, this show, uh, this concept that we keep rolling with week after week. What, we're 358 episodes in, uh, not counting all the specials we've done. It's probably close to 400 now. Uh, Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks to uh, Kelly Crandall, Shane McElrath, uh, Ryan Beat. 
for all calling into the show today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, give me a follow. It's at Jim Beaver 15 on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We've also got a second uh, Instagram account at Down and Dirty Show. And then we've got a massive Facebook group that we talk all kinds of uh, automotive and racing things. Um, it's Jim Beaver's Action Motorsports Discussion. We just hit, uh, I think, 1,100 members in it. So uh, make sure and join that group. Lots of fun. Uh, we're talking all kinds of good stuff over there. I uh, got NHRA coming up this weekend, Four Wides in Vegas, uh, Camp Razor. I'll be out there Friday. Um, also got SEMA show next week and the Off Road Motorsports Hall of Fame on Monday. Make sure and get your tickets there if you haven't already. Um, they're selling out quick. I think there's only a handful left. So if you got any uh, inkling to go, I would say get your ticket now. Um, thanks to Polaris Razor, General Tire, Subaru, Vision Wheel, Gibson Exhaust, Casey Highlights, Dirtfish, Optimus Moto Shield Pro, Blue Water Resort and Casino, our friends at GoParts.com. Uh, don't forget that's go-parts.com. And uh, thank you guys uh, for continuing to support the show. Don't forget to check out my other show, uh, Project Action, uh, that drops on uh, iTunes and the Podcast One Network as well as my website on Thursdays. Subscribe to that as well. Subscribe to the Down and Dirty Radio Show. And uh, if you're looking for a discount at Dirtfish, who is it, right? Everybody's always looking for a discount. It is uh, JB Dirtfish. That'll get you 15% off any and all classes at Dirtfish Rally School. We'll be back next week with more of the Down and Dirty Radio Show. Thank you guys once again for tuning in and uh, always supporting us. Be safe. As always, game on.